let's take a look at units and order of magnitude. So units in physics are incredibly important. We will see them every day. We can't get away from them. And the reason why is because units are needed in order to make sense of the numbers that we see. So the numbers that we see won't make sense without units. Uh, to give you an example, let's say you're supposed to figure out how far away the 7-Eleven is. You ask your friend, how far away is the 7-Eleven? Uh, and your friend comes back and says, well, it's 16. Okay, uh, you need a little more than that. You need a unit to go along with that number to make sense of it. Is it 16 inches away? Is it 16 feet away? Is it 16 meters? 16 kilometers? 16 miles? What is it? You need that unit in order to make sense of it. Another example would be if you ask someone, how old are you? And the person responds, I'm 216. So normally we answer that question in units of years, but if someone is answering 216 years, that's a little suspicious. So you'd want more information. You'd want to know what unit they mean, what unit they're measuring in. Are they 216 weeks old? Because then it's like my daughter's age. Are they 216 months old? Then it's like one of my students' ages. If they're 216 years old, you probably have some follow-up questions about that. So units are incredibly important to make sense of the numbers that we see. Now, if we're going to communicate with other people about measurements, it's useful if we're all using the same set of units. And in the scientific community, they often use something called the Système International, or SI system. The SI system is based on seven base or fundamental units. And that's all you need for any measurement that you can conceive of in physics. And the seven base units are the meter, the second, the kilogram, the kelvin, the mole, the ampere, and the candela. And the meter is a measurement of length, second is a measurement of time, kilogram a measurement of mass, kelvin a measure of temperature, mole a measure of number of things, ampere a measure of current, don't worry if you don't know what current is, and candela is a measurement of luminous intensity. Again, don't worry if you don't know what luminous intensity is right now. So in physics, we can either measure something in terms of one of these units or in terms of a combination of these units. So for example, a length you can measure in terms of meters. A duration of time you can measure in terms of seconds. A temperature you can measure in terms of Kelvin. Now perhaps you need to measure a speed, and it turns out that speed has units of meters per second, or meters divided by seconds. And another way to write that would be meters times s to the minus 1. That's often how we write it in IB. Or if you need a density, the unit of density is a kilogram per cubic meter, which is kilograms divided by meters to the third power, or kilograms times m to the minus 3. So these units can be combined in all kinds of different ways. And we'll see lots of different ways. We'll even see something called like a kilogram meter cubed ampere squared. Now, you're probably wondering how the heck did you come up with that combination? And that leads us to something called dimensional analysis. So let's imagine that we're measuring an area of a rectangle. Now, the area of a rectangle is just the length times the width, right? Area equals length times width. If we look at this equation, we know from math that the number has to be the same side on both sides of an equation. Well, in physics, it turns out that the unit has to be the same side on both sides of an equation, with a couple exceptions that we're not going to worry about right now. So the unit has to be the same on both sides of an equation. So let's say that we want to figure out the area of a rectangle. We know the area of a rectangle is length times the width. Okay, so what's the unit of area? Well. The unit has to be the same on both sides of the equation. The unit of length is meter. The unit of width is meter. So on the right-hand side of this equation, we have meters times meters. We have meters squared. So the unit of area has to be the same thing. The unit of area is a meter squared, or square meter. And let's say we wanted to figure out the volume of a rectangular solid. Well, the volume of a rectangular solid is length times width times height. So if we look at the units on the right-hand side, the units of each of these things is a meter. So the unit of the volume is a meter times a meter times a meter, or a meter cubed. And what if we were talking about average speed? Well, turns out average speed can be written as a distance over a time. And, well, the unit of distance is a meter. The unit of time is a second. So the unit of average speed 
is meters divided by seconds, or meters per second, or meters times s to the minus 1. And I could give you any old equation, and if I give you enough information about the units on one side, you should be able to figure out the units on the other side. So for example, let's say we had x equals 1 half a t squared. And I'm going to tell you that a has units of meters per second squared, and t has units of seconds. And I want to know what the units of x would be in this situation. Well, a has units of meters per second squared, so if we switch over to the unit view, we have meters per second squared from a, and then t provides units of seconds, but t is squared, so t squared provides units of seconds squared. And then that 1 half sitting down in front, that 1 half doesn't provide anything. 1 half is just a number, it doesn't have a unit on it, so it doesn't provide any units. So x has units of meters per second squared times second squared, seconds cancel out, so x has units of meters. If that seems complicated, if you're a little rusty on exponents, don't worry, that's what classroom practice will be for. And the last thing we're going to look at is order of magnitude. And all order of magnitude is, is it's the nearest power of 10. So powers of 10, those are things like 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, million, and then 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0.0001, 0 .0001, and so on. Or if we were to express it in scientific notation, 1 is 10 to the 0, 10 is 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 3, 10 to the 4, and so on. And then over here, 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 3, and so on. So, for example, if I asked you, what's the order of magnitude of 3 meters? All I'm asking is, what power of 10 is closest to 3 meters? And 3 meters, let's see, is that closest to 1 or 10? Well, it's closer to 1, so the order of magnitude is 1 meter. If we want to get fancy, that's 10 to the 0 meters. If I had 9 meters, what's the order of magnitude of 9 meters? Well, that's closer to 10 than it is to 1, so that rounds up to 10 meters, or 10 to the 1 meters. Or if I had 0.2 meters, the order of magnitude of that, well, let's see, what power of 10 is 0.2 closest to? It's closest to 0.1, so that's 10 to the minus 1 meters. Uh, 0.7 meters, what's the order of magnitude? Well, 1. It's closest to 1 meter, so 10 to the 0 meters. 15 meters, what's the order of magnitude of 15 meters? Is that closest to 10 or 100? Hmm. Well, it's closer to 10, definitely. So the order of magnitude is 10 meters, or 10 to the 1 meter. Um, 8,590 meters, what's the order of magnitude of that? Well, the nearest power of 10 would be 10,000 meters, or 10 to the 4 meters. And then if I had 0 0.0036 meters, what's the nearest power of 10 for that? Well. That's closest to 0 0.001 meters, or 10 to the minus 3 meters. That's all order of magnitude is.